So, today is the second to last day of my free BSD challenge, and so far everything has been going fairly well. But today I just want to talk about some programs and other things that haven't worked so well, or just downright weren't available. And we're talking about that right now on the Linux Lounge. So first I'd like to make a follow up to day 4's video. I wanted to see if I could get the XVK working on BSD, but for some reason the 64-bit version of Wine wouldn't launch anything. I couldn't get Play on BSD to launch either, so I couldn't install an alternative version of Wine that way. So now I can say with 100% certainty that 64-bit Windows programs and DXVK will not work on BSD, which sadly makes gaming on BSD a little bit limited. Another problem I've had with BSD is this. Most of the software that runs on BSD seems to be ported over from Linux, which is a fantastic thing. The two operating systems are very similar, so they can share software quite easily, and it means we get lots of high quality free and open source software on BSD. However, the caveat to that is that the software that is very Linux specific won't get a BSD port. For instance, a few days ago I needed to format a USB. Now typically I would have used Gparted or Gnome Disk to do this, however neither of these programs has a BSD port, so I had to use their terminal, which was no big deal. Formatting USB sticks with a terminal program is quite a well documented process and I had no trouble doing it. But what I will say is this, if you're going to use BSD, you're probably going to have to use the terminal at some point, since a lot of Linux GUI programs aren't ported over because they're so Linux specific. And I think that this might be something that will scare new users off. And to be honest, I think this whole Linux specific programs not making their way to BSD holds up in a lot of areas. For example, there's no good GUI package manager for BSD. The one that's included in GhostBSD is very, very old school in the way that it looks and sadly frequently crashes and there's no port of the GNOME Software Center or something like that for instance which sadly might be a deal breaker for new users. As well as that, there's a lot of proprietary programs that have a Linux version, but won't make it to BSD. As a result of being proprietary, there is no way really to build them to run on BSD. However, with that said, there is a Linux compatibility layer that you can try, and apparently people have had luck running certain proprietary programs with it. Personally, I won't be trying it out this week as I want to see what BSD can do on its own, but after this week, I will absolutely be giving this a look as it might be a little bit handy where there's a few Linux only programs that I want to run. So I know that today's video has been a little bit negative towards BSD, but the truth is this, BSD has a very impressive software library, and I think for most people, provided that you don't mind dropping back into a terminal from time to time, you'll probably find it to be absolutely sufficient for everything that you want to do. But, to people who are very used to the Linux way of doing things, are attached to specific GUI programs, or who are new to Unix-like systems generally, I should probably say this. If you're among these groups, you might struggle a bit with BSD. However, it's absolutely nothing that you can't learn, and I've personally found it to be quite easy to get to grips with. But, with that said, that's it for today's video, and I will see you tomorrow for the conclusion to my free BSD challenge. Thanks for watching.